Merck out with its third quarter results just a few minutes ago. And joining us right now to break down that report is Robert Davis. He's the president and CEO of Merck and soon to be chairman of the board. Robert, some strong numbers today. You all beat on the top and the bottom line and raised guidance for the full year, both for sales and for earnings per share. What's, what's driving that growth? Well, well, really, you know, we have such strong momentum across all of our key growth drivers, whether it be Katruda, Gardasil, or animal health business. Uh, the momentum is there. We're making steady progress in the pipeline. And as you say, what it allowed us to deliver was really a strong quarter. You know, top line growth at 14 percent, 18 percent if you adjust for foreign currency. And importantly, those results allowed us to invest 22 cents in the form of business development to augment our pipeline, to, to continue to bring in great science that's going to protect us for the future as well. So we feel really good about where the business is, the momentum we have, and really the fundamentals that we're seeing. Yeah, Keytruda sales up 20 percent. What's the, the most important development with Keytruda? Some of these new trials to work on, uh, on Keytruda focusing on different things. But what, what, what's the headline, the takeaway from what's happening with Keytruda right now? Well, what you're really seeing is obviously we continue to see a strong growth in non-small cell lung cancer as we look across the globe. But what this really reflects is the fact that we've been able to expand Keytruda into ever-increasing numbers of different tumor types. That is driving the growth as we go into new indications. And then also importantly, we're moving into earlier lines of therapy. You know, obviously, the real hope as you think about what you're trying to deliver for patients uh, is to get into the earliest lines of therapy that when you can get to the cancer before it is metastasized, and that's what we're trying to do. So it's really that move into the adjuvant, neoadjuvant space, as well as expanded indications across other tumor types that is what's fueling the growth we're continuing to see with Keytruda. The, uh, the news from Moderna and, and the, the vaccine that, that they're developing, personalized cancer. So Keytruda doesn't need to know whose tumor it is. That, that kind of works on all of them. But it, you, if you could combine, combine it, uh, and I don't know if you're working with other companies besides Moderna that, that actually go in and take a, a biopsy of an individual's tumor and then find exactly what, uh, how that's different from other tumors and then use it with Keytruda. It seems like that might be something that you could do again and again and again with, with different, what do you call them, adjuvants? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it is as, as we look at what we're doing with the personalized cancer vaccine, obviously we've seen early data and are very encouraged by it, see a lot of opportunity there. But as you point out, one of the things we're trying to do is to extend Keytruda in the form of driving a deeper response. And that's what the hope is by mm -hmm. combining uh, an mRNA based vaccine with Keytruda you can deepen the response, deepen the effectiveness of Keytruda. And then beyond that, as you mentioned, we're also continuing to be very interested in antibody drug conjugates, a different uh, technology than the personalized cancer vaccines, but also one, again, aimed at how do you drive enhanced effectiveness for Keytruda. So as we see it, Keytruda is obviously foundational in the treatment of cancer. These other platforms are ways to enhance the benefit that Katrina brings for the patients, and that's why we were excited to partner with Moderna on this.